were fresh off the heels of a win at Pocono by Ryan Blaney, his 12th career win back at the track where he scored his first ever victory. And Blaney says it was a lot of plans all coming together. I knew early that our car was competitive enough to try to contend for the win, and then we kind of migrated to that game plan. And props to Jonathan for having that game plan and it uh, working out. All the all the pit crew guys did a good job of executing when they needed to to, to keep us in, you know, that front battle. And so yeah, it's it's a constant change of plans, and you never know when a caution is going to come out. It can ruin or make your race. You just try to do the best you can with controlling the things that you can control. And we did. We, we controlled the hell out of things that we could control, and it worked out, you know, the very best for us. Great quote from the movie Dune. Of course, it's a great quote because it's from Dune. <laughs> but there's a line, there are plans within plans. And, Brad Gilly, that was the case yesterday. You had a plan, but then you had another plan if a caution came out or if somebody else did something. That was a thinking person's race. I'm usually not into strategy races, but this one had a nice theme to it. Well, you know, I look, look first you have to start with plan A, but you also have to assume that you're going to be at plan double Z by the time that the race is over. And a lot of it is just what opportunity presents itself. And when it does, what can you do? You know, let's go back to some strategy at Gateway. Jonathan Hassler, Ryan Blaney's crew chief, opted, let's get the fastest pit stop we can, unbuckle that fuel can as soon as you can. Their teammate, Austin Sendrick, they held that fuel can in for another 1.3 seconds. Guess who actually made it to the finish line before they ran out of fuel? Jonathan Hassler is great at doing some extreme strategies at times. And not that yesterday was necessarily extreme, but he's thinking what is going to be the winning call. And they made the winning call, and he had the right guy behind the wheel to do it. I think he was also thinking... Let's not run out of gas on the last lap again. Yeah, good point. Yeah. <laughs> they asked him about that in post race availability. If you know if that was something that he thinks about now, and of course it is. Um, but that's the kind of race that Pocono seems to always be and, and present to us. One where depending on where the cautions fall or um, you know what what avenue you try to go, do you try to short pit and flip the stage? You know, does it, and if you do that, is it going to work for you the way that the cautions fall? That just seems to be the kind of race that Pocono always is. Um, and a lot of people really enjoy that. I mean, there there is a lot of, you said it's a, th- a thinking person's race. Right. <laughs> so maybe not so much for me, but uh, no, I'm just kidding. I, you know, those kind of races are fun to watch. If you can follow them and if you have a broadcast that is keeping you informed on what is happening, I think that's really important, especially for the casual fan to know, okay, well, this is what the game board looks like, and this is where all the pieces are, and this is what can happen. Um, and I thought that, that NBC did a good job of that. This race did not pass the eye test. There wasn't a lot of side-by-side. There were some crashes and stuff, but there wasn't mm-hmm. a lot of direct battling. It was it was more of a chess match than it was checkers, but if you bothered to follow along, it was a pretty good storyline. It's kind of like Mike Tyson, the great boxer, said, everyone has a plan until you get punched in the mouth. <laughs> yeah, that's it, a great point. And he's right, and, and other teams got punched in the mouth. They either crashed out or they mm-hmm. got out strategized. And I really feel like this race came down to who got out on pit road first. I mean, there there was a, a quite a long period of time in this race where I thought, you know, you never want to say it's a foregone conclusion, but I was pretty sure that Denny Hamlin was going to be the guy, you know, potentially sitting in victory lane when it was all said and done. And it just shows that that's not always the case. Um, I think he did have the fastest car, and I don't think he won. The fastest car doesn't always win. That's right. It's not a fastest car contest. It is a race, and it's about being the fastest to the checkered flag. And I thought Chase Elliott squandered an opportunity with that mm-hmm. late race penalty getting caught on speeding on pit road. They, they run through that same trap all day long. And then he gets popped. He had, a, I think, a top three car at least. I would agree. And, and one of four drivers, literally the same section uh, on the same round of pit stop, section seven there, which apparently people were saying maybe it was measured different or so on and so forth. But either way. There were four that got penalized. There were 32 that didn't. It seemed like going into this race, it was almost a foregone conclusion that a Toyota was going to win. Probably a Toyota from Joe Gibbs Racing Stable. Martin Truex Jr., first win of the year. Ty Gibbs was on the pole for this event. Mm -hmm. Denny Hamlin is Mr. Pocono. So you just felt like, okay, that's where the trophy's going to go. Everybody's battling for second. But in the end, Denny Hamlin had to settle for second. I mean, as far as having one of the best cards, it, it got away, but it's still a good day. It, if you blindly said, okay, we're not going to go race at Pocono, you're going to finish first, second, second, are you all right with that? I, I would probably take it. So he took it. It was a nice points day for him. 
And Alexis and Brad, they needed this because he had been floundering the last month or so. Mm -hmm. He had been. I mean, he even mentioned it, um, you know, on his podcast, Actions Detrimental, that he <laughs> he's been having a terrible uh, month. He blamed it on Blame his, the dog. He blamed it on his new dog, which I don't. That's not very fair. It's a country to, song. to the new wow. dog. Um, but yeah, I mean, they definitely needed this, and I think he had a good quote too. We're 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 giving away lots of good quotes here today. He had a good quote after the race yesterday that said, "You never lose a race; you just run out of time." Time. Um, and, you know, certainly, I don't know if that's always the case, but it was potentially the case for him yesterday. Yeah, I, I like that quote, though, mm -hmm. actually. But, yeah, he did need a good day. Look, we have five races to go until the playoffs begin. And Denny Hamlin, while he's won three races and has been very strong, he's not exactly right up there in the point standings. In every position he can gain between now and the end of the regular season at Darlington, is going to be at potential playoffs point that he can earn. And they've done a good job winning stages, winning yep. races, and all of that. But still, you're going to be giving up something to everyone in front of you. You have to have that consistency and, and literally just hit the ball straight down the line. You need a storehouse of bonus points and stage points once yeah. you get to the playoffs because mm -hmm. the, the year that Chase Elliott won the title, that's how he did it. Yep. He had such a boatload of playoff points when they got to the playoffs that it literally almost pushed him all the way to the Final Four, and then he won the championship. I, I want to give a little shout-out here to Alex Bowman. Hadn't done much this year. Had, had been hanging around in the high-rent district. He won last week, and he raced up to a third-place finish this week. Is, is Alex Bowman somebody we need to be looking out for? You know, I, I think that's a case study for what momentum can do for you. I really, really do. I mean, obviously, Alex hasn't had a terrible season. He hasn't. It's just that there are people around him that have had um, – you know, really good seasons, and they're getting talked about way more uh, than what Alex Bowman is getting talked about. He gets that win at Chicago that propels him, obviously, to the to the front of of um, you know everybody's stories and in the media and everything else. And then he backs it up with a top three finish. So I think, um, like I said, it's a case study for what momentum can do, and it'll be interesting to see kind of where he goes from here. Does he continue that momentum? Um, you know, do we continue to see him in the storylines or not? Look, two races is not a trend. But, but I, I like Alex Bowman. I'm not saying Alex Bowman is Kyle Larson, Chase Elliott, William Byron, his three teammates at all. But Alex Bowman's a guy capable of having a four-win season. Alex Bowman is a guy that two years ago missed six races because of a head injury. Last year missed three races with a back injury and came back. And also yesterday with that uh, third-place finish, moved up into the top ten in point standings. Now he's only three behind Brad Keselowski to move into ninth. It is possible, again, climbing that ladder, trying to finish as high as you can within the top ten and get as many playoffs points as you can. Watch the NBC broadcast team yesterday on the USA Network. And Steve Letarte had some nice insight. He said, I think we underestimate how hard it is for drivers to come back from injury. Mm -hmm. And Alex Bowman had a couple of bad ones, a concussion and a broken back. Yeah. That, that's that's pretty serious. That's not part of the Band-Aid Brigade going to the emergency room. So I think all of us collectively might have been a little bit guilty of saying, well, he's just not any good anymore. I think it takes a while to get reacclimated to these race cars. Yeah. I think so, absolutely, especially when you're talking about a head injury. I mean, look at look at what happened to Dale Earnhardt Jr. Look what happened to Kurt Busch. I mean, those Chase things. Elliott. Chase yeah. Elliott. Those things are serious um, and take serious recovery time and recuperation time. And to be able to do that and not only to, to recover and to recuperate but end up back in victory lane, it's a big deal. Mm -hmm. Yeah, these cars have a learning curve. And every week you're not in it, there are a bunch of other people who are in it learning more and more. They take advantage of you because you're yeah. you're sitting still and they're pushing forward every every day that you miss. Mm 